to the finale of Chekhov's The Symphony of Five, played by Alexis Gaikadzovska, conducted by Brett Mazzell. The song right now is coming up to be 31 minutes past eight. It's Thursday morning, and our film critic, Hal Wild, who is here. Good morning. Good morning. And we're going to talk about um, a love story, a spy thriller, an underwater adventure, but not three movies. All in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes you might think it's three movies, but yeah, we're talking about the film *Submergence*, which opens today. It's the latest film by acclaimed director Vim Vendors. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Vim Vendors' work. Maybe you are, and yeah, you don't you tell me. You, some of the yeah, uh, yeah, *Pina*, the documentary about Pina Bosch, the famous uh, legendary dance choreographer. Right? Did yeah. you ever see that movie? *Pina* came out a couple of years ago. Excellent. *Buena Vista Social Club*. Okay. And you're like, oh, that was Vim Vendors, yeah. right? There yeah. you go. So mm-hmm. he's done documentaries, he's done feature films. So this is a feature film. And it stars Oscar winner Alicia Vikander from uh, Tomb Raider and the du- Danish girl and Ex Machina. And she's the, has, she's the wife of, um, what's the guy's name? Michael Fassbender, mm-hmm. right? So you know who she is. And also stars uh, this week's poster boy for personal trainers everywhere, James McAvoy. <laughs> I don't know if you've been reading. Do you ever read like these, like these, you know, Hollywood magazines? Sometimes or? I watch e news. Or yeah, that sort of thing. So you know, like he's in the news lately because he's been working out. Oh, I haven't seen. Oh, him, okay. But... No, I, I, well, he's he's in the latest X Men franchise. He's Charles Xavier. You know, the 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 role that Patrick Stewart had for many many years. So, so I don't know. I guess um, he decided to buff himself. Uh-huh. So he's 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 on the way to buffness. Buffed him. So <laughs> he's not there yet, but he's on the way. He's not as scrawny as he used to be. So he's he's in all the news lately because people are going, wow, look at him. Anyhow, so you would think you have a fantastic director. You have two wonderful um, uh, actors. You would think that this would be um, a wonderful film. And it's being billed as a love story for the ages. But um, as you said at the outset, it's three stories and they don't really come together. This is what, yeah, critics have This been is saying. what they're saying, yeah. So, unfortunately, it's not quite the fantastic voyage that it should be. Now, the story is, it's it's about uh, McAvoy, who plays an MI6 operative by the name of James Moore. So, you have James playing James, interesting, who decides to go to Somalia against the advice of his handlers, I might add. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know spies could just decide to go off somewhere on their own and, you know, not have uh, people above them saying, no, you can't go. But in this movie, they do that. And he has the infiltration of going, of infiltrating, uh, the intention of infiltrating a group of jihadis who are behind a series of suicide bombings in Europe. Now, he before he throws himself into the lion's den, he decides to check himself into this quaint uh, luxury hotel. It's like one of these old houses that's been converted to a hotel. It's five stars because they show you that it's five stars. Although it doesn't look five stars, but that's a different matter. And it's in Normandy. And he wants some pre-mission r and and while he's there, he meets Danielle Flinders, who's Vikander's character, and she's there for the same reason. But she is a biomathematician. I've never even heard of that profession, a biomathematician, who is about to head to the ocean floor near Iceland to investigate marine life in the darkest deep. So in the floor on the, you know, on the floor of the ocean. Now the pair immediately hit it off, and they agree to reunite after their respective uh, high-risk adventures end. Now, she doesn't know what he does, though, but he knows what she does. Now, once in Somalia, however, Moore is taken captive, and he's held in a dark room within earshot of the ocean surf. And just as Danny, Danielle, uh, descends into her watery abyss, Moore's situation becomes even more dire. And throughout his harrowing ordeal, he, he maintains memories of his time with her, and what she told him about life existing in the deep dark. So that's the the, the the crux of the story. So they're both entering darkness. She's entering optimistically. He's entering a little, you know, I don't want to say pessimism, but nervous because his life is is definitely in danger. And uh, But he remembers what she told him. So you know, that's the story. Now, it may be, you know, as I was watching this film, I thought it's sort of reminiscent of The English Patient. 
Um, it's this, it's it's a romantic epic that's supposed to sweep us off our feet. But many would argue, and I'm one of these people who would argue, that even The English Patient made for a better book than it made for a movie. Although it did win lots of awards, but I thought the book was much better than the movie. And this is based on a book. And it's also based on books, based on somebody by the name of J.M. Ledgard's book of the same name, Submergence. I've never even heard of this book. Have you? No. No. Um, I'm guessing the book works better than the movie. It just, it just, you know, I'm watching this going, it's, we'll have to read it to find out. Yeah, it's got to be a better book than a movie. It just, it just doesn't work. Because as Danny and James go their separate ways, the film bounces back, the story bounces back between the two, and his story is much more interesting than her story. And it's much, it's much more thrilling, although it's not even thrilling, but it's, you know, it's supposed to be thrilling. And, you know, and that's part of the problem. It's really not that thrilling, but <laughs> and it's, it's certainly more interesting. And, and she ends up, you know, we were watching her basically pine and pout because she wonders why he hasn't contacted her. You know, she doesn't know what he does for a living. She knows he's gone off to Somalia for, he told her, he tells her he's, he works for an NGO in Bolton Water uh, water purification or something to that effect. So he wonders why he she has she wonders why she hasn't heard from him at all. And it's like pout pout pine pine you know moan check moan moan. Check your phone. Yeah, check your phone. Check your phone. <laughs> Where's the text? And, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> and 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 even though you know you you would think that like I'm saying, sweetheart, maybe he's not that into you. <laughs> You know, you had a nice fling for a couple of days. You know, you think you've made a connection. Maybe he's just not that into you. But she refuses to accept that. And she just... to have this kind of, like, feeling after just such a short period of time. It's look... A, is, 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 it's not terribly convincing. It's not... Look, I, I'm. you know what? I'm, I, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I'll, I'll say, okay, maybe she really did have a connection with him. But, you know... <laughs> You know, get over it, right? Okay. And, and and right before her big dive, she jumps ship. She asks to leave and go off to the Faroe Islands for a couple of days to clear her head. And, you know, you would think her, her colleagues on board the ship, her fellow scientists or mathematicians, would say, you know what, this is not a right time for you to be leaving us. This is a very critical moment in our mission, and you're leaving us. And, she, and she's saying, oh, it's okay, I'll be back. And they're like, oh, okay, fine. So, you know, so I, you know, I, I, I didn't like that. Maybe in the book it's dealt with better. I don't know. So, from a cinematic perspective, I felt that her story is very overdrawn. It's it's broody, and 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 it just doesn't mesh compared to his scenes, which are tense, a little tense, could be more tense. But you know, as he's descending into this spy hell. So, you know, the, 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 the combination of, of really starkly different tones just doesn't play well. And, and what ends up happening is the audience is sort of stuck in sort of no man's land going, okay, I don't really feel so much for this relationship. So, unfortunately, it didn't really work for me. And, and then also, as I said, the, the scenes of his scenes um, really could have been edgier that I felt that the writing wasn't that uh, Electric, you know, they needed to have the writers from TV's Homeland to, you know, throw some bit of electricity in there, make it a little bit more tense. Now, the film is not a complete dud. It's, you know, you you had said that you had read a review that was negative. What what, what did what did you read? Well, no, basically about all the things that you commented on. But this review said that there were beautifully captured locations. Yeah, Normandy never looked so good, <laughs> <laughs> and the Faroe Islands, <laughs> and a lush soundtrack. Did you pay attention to the music? Uh, okay, yeah, the soundtrack was nice. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to say no. Yeah, what else? But you said that the review read they really didn't like the movie. Oh, they said it was a bit of a mess. Sadly, predictable. <laughs> uh, of else? course, it, yeah, it's, of course it's predictable. And, and as I was thinking... Well, what if they had made it unpredictable? Would that have worked? And I think, yeah, they could have, they could have made it... You know, the, you know, obviously you think, okay, they're going to get back together, right? That's the, that's the predictable. And I don't know, if, I don't remember, I don't want to ruin it, but I don't even remember if they do get back together, to tell you the truth. Yeah, no, that's a spoiler. Yeah, that's a spoiler. <laughs> but, you know, like, let's, let's go with the unpredictable. Like, let's say they don't get it back together. It was that good you don't remember. Yeah, it was that good. I, I've seen three movies in the past five days, you know. Oh. So, um, you know, let's say they, we go with the unpredictable, where they don't get back together. Would that have worked? And I think, yeah, that would have worked. 
So, um, yeah, okay. But you know what? I'm not saying this was this was a mess. This was just not a. This was just really not a great movie. It's not as good as it could have been. I think it could have had better writing, maybe better direction. Because you, but you have a really good director and you have two really good actors. So I think maybe the writing was the problem here. So it it didn't really work for me. It it wasn't a love story for the ages. Um, certainly, if you watch the trailer, you think it will be. Um, and honestly, she's gorgeous to look at. I'll be very sexist and say that. I could watch her all day. <laughs> and he's and he's beautiful. And he's a wonderful actor. You know, I don't want to take anything away from him. They're both very good actors. So, but it just didn't work for me. So I'm sorry. Not a great film for this week. And um, yeah, I wish I could say go see it. But um, well, go see it and you know, tell me I'm right or tell me I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah. How it was. Thanks. Thank you.